So Patrick, we're going to turn to you and ask you to tell us about the skies. I know we've, we've already got that first one covered and that is the moon coming close to Mars and that beautiful sight. I hope everybody got a chance to see it. So tell us a little bit more. Oh yes. So yeah, I hope you all went out and saw the Mars and moon you know, close together, which was great over there in the east. And we're going to go to the next slide because uh, Mars is very much in our story this month. And uh, since April, it's been very dim. And these series of pictures, we see that Mars is getting bigger and bigger. And as it gets bigger, it appears brighter in our sky. That's why when you looked at it tonight, it was very much bright and right next to the moon. So Mars and Earth are getting close together. And its closest approach from Earth will occur on the 6th of this month where it'll be um, 36.8 million miles away. So I encourage you to uh, go out um, in the evening, take a look at Mars, and the light coming from Mars will be just about 3.5 light minutes. That's three and a half minutes from the surface of Mars to get to your eye. Amazing. And now on the 13th, Mars goes into opposition. So uh, let's go to the next slide. So this is still the series of pictures that we have. And uh, I think the last picture is kind of middle of September here. And so as we get close to Mars, how big will Mars get in our sky? In our next well, there's century? a rumor as to how big, whenever Mars goes into opposition, roughly, because the orbits are slightly uh, not round, but it's roughly as close to us uh, as it gets in its orbit. So there's a rumor that goes around every time. And do you know what that rumor is? <laughs> Yeah, it, it was uh, since the last opposition of uh, uh, 2003, which was one of the closest passes, closest minimum distance between Earth and Mars. Right after that, for a few years, people were getting in the email that uh, if you uh, if you were to look at uh, Mars, it would be as big as the full moon. So, so we're here to tell you it is not as big as the full moon. It will never be as big as the full moon. And if you went out and looked at the full moon tonight next to Mars, you know that's true. So Patrick, how do those sizes compare? Well, let's say it's, it's actually in angular size uh, when Mars is close to us, uh, the moon is actually 72 times bigger than the diameter of Mars. So there we have it. Now, the only way you can actually see Mars as big as the moon, maybe one day our future astronauts will go there and it will be truly as big as the full moon. So, <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, what? What's, what's all, all this about opposition? Well, opposition is uh, if you draw a line from the sun through the earth through Mars, you get an opposition. And uh, in the next slide, we can see the distance of that opposition. So, of course, Mars is prominent in our evening sky and it will be visible. It will start fading a bit as the uh, weeks go by. Uh, but something else you can see, and uh, don't forget to look for it, is over in the, the south there in the evening sky, just uh, west of south, uh, we see two planets. One is Saturn, and the bright planet is Jupiter. So we just uh, we talked about the Juno spacecraft going around Jupiter. And there's loads of orbiting uh, spacecraft and ground spacecraft on, on Mars as well. So, so this is uh, what we have for our evening sky. Let's go to the next slide here uh, to see uh, something that if you were up early this morning, you would have seen and uh, looked for Venus. You would have seen it right next to the bright star Regulus in the constellation of Leo the Lion. It's only about half a degree or one moon diameter apart. So don't worry if you missed this this morning because tomorrow morning, Venus will be just half a degree below the bright star Regulus. So if you have a camera, uh, go out and see if you can photograph this rare conjunction between Regulus and Venus. It happens once every eight years. I love All this right. because it really shows the difference a day makes. The yeah. stars are very far away, so they don't move. I mean, everything moves across the sky through the course of the night, but that's really showing how much Venus is moving in its orbit in a single day. It's 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 pretty remarkable. It's, and it's, of course, it's, you know, Venus is where Tannhäuser hangs out and Venusburg, so. <laughs> and we're looking at all those phosphine uh, molecules. All, all those phosphine <laughs> molecules, yeah. <laughs> and also on Venus, uh, uh, on the 14th, uh, the moon and Venus will be together in the east in the morning. So uh, look for that. It's a pretty sight. So you can see the uh, thin crescent moon. I think, I think it's about 26 days old, just uh, rising above the eastern horizon with brilliant Venus, uh, just a little bit higher. Uh, so if you're like me and you go to bed late and get up late, try to switch it around, see the beautiful morning sky. Yeah, I, I, I can't hard for me to do that. 
<laughs> I'm a night person. Uh, so, so speaking of being up at night, the evening of the 20th to the morning of the 21st, there's our annual Orionid meteor shower, and the meteors originate just above the right shoulder of Orion, marked by the Orion radiant. And if we go to the next slide, you can see the details of how many meteors you can see and uh, what time to look for these uh, meteors. You'll see a few bright fireballs from them. I've seen them in, in the past, and they kind of surprise you. The parent comet from the, that produces all this dust that causes the meteors as we plow through is uh, Comet Halley. All right, we go to the next slide. And we end up with our Halloween theme pumpkin moon phase table here. And uh, we can see all the principal moon phases identified here. But I want to point out uh, two things are special about this moon phase calendar. On the 1st of October, which uh, already happened, we had a full moon. But if you look at the end of the month, there's another full moon. So two full moons in a month. The second full moon is a blue moon, in this case, a blue full moon pumpkin. So that's, that's kind of special. Is it really blue? <laughs> well, actually, if we look at the next slide, I kind of made a kind of a illustration of what that might look like. Not quite blue, but uh, if you happen to be out trick-or-treating under the light of the full moon, make sure that that light of the full moon will um, hopefully illuminate your way to all those special treats. <laughs> <laughs> Safely. I'm not sure what the rules are. We had a conversation the other day about wanting to make sure we knew, and it's in different places, different uh, policies. So make sure you know what the safe uh, situation is for, for your loved ones, your little ones to go out and uh, get those treats. Or, or your big ones, if, you know, Patrick goes trick-or-treating every year, beats the kids back to get to the candy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so, gonna go out and look for the moon and Mars. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> 